But on the occasion of International Yoga Day, we speak to one corporate thought leader who has been a proponent and active practitioner of yoga for I think over two decades now. Rajiv Bajaj, Managing Director at Bajaj Auto is joining in. Rajiv, uh, always a pleasure speaking to you here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, for as long as I've known you, yoga has played a very important role in every stage of your life, right? But I think it's when times get tough that the practice comes to your aid the most. And in the last five years, it's been a really tough phase for you, perhaps, with both a major health scare and a personal setback. Um, how has yoga helped you through it all? Well, good morning, Sonia. And uh, first and foremost, greetings to everyone on uh, Yoga Day. Uh, you know, I live in Pune, and therefore I had the good fortune of being a student of uh, Guruji P.K. Sayangar for the longest time. And uh, <clears throat> I learned a few things about yoga from him. Uh, to start with, Guruji said that uh, the body is universal, the mind is individual, uh, and hence all problems uh, of the kind that you mentioned start with the mind. Um, and I think we all acknowledge today that, uh, you know, whether it's eczema, asthma, irritable bowel syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, thyroidism, diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, what have you, you know, these may manifest in the body but these are uh, essentially diseases that are rooted in the mind. Um, and I think uh, yoga, uh, simply put, helps us to calm our breath and therefore to calm our mind. And this is why Guruji would say, let the breath uh, be your teacher. So I think yoga, more specifically the asanas of the kind that uh, you've put on uh, on air right now, uh, help us to use the body um, to, to turn the mind inwards, uh, away from the stress of the outside world. And that is why Guruji would say, yoga teaches us to cure what must not be endured and to endure what cannot be cured. <laughs> that's, um, that's fabulous. You know, uh, Rajiv, I think I have uh, tracked not just your business, but your yoga practice over the years as well. I remember visiting the Prana Center in Pune too. And I noticed that with every passing year, the poses get even more complex. And I, I, I mean, we were just looking at some of those visuals. I don't think people uh, 20 years, 30 years younger than you can even do that. But uh, that's, that's great to see. But from a business or from a, you know, sort of a life lesson standpoint, what is the big takeaway for you over the last, uh, say, two decades? What's your biggest life lesson been from yoga? So, Sonia, first of all, please don't imply that I'm old. Um, <laughs> And uh, let me give you an example from 2012, when I had hurt my back quite grievously. I was uh, advised three weeks of bed rest and possible surgery, spine surgery after that. Guruji heard of this. He asked me to come and see him. I was too scared to go to him because he was a tough taskmaster. Um, but I was even more frightened of a knife in my spine. So I did go to him. Uh, under his personal supervision, he made me do uh, two hours of yoga and I was amazed at myself because I was in so much pain that at home I was not able to stand under the shower for two minutes and here I was doing backbends uh, and sirsasanas uh, and I asked him, you know, I said, uh, uh, Guruji, I feel 30% better at the end of uh, two hours of yoga uh, when I was actually uh, advised bed rest and surgery. So, you know, uh, how do you explain this? And he said something uh, beautiful to me that day that has helped me in my work as well. He said, you know, the surgeon believes that function follows structure. If he fixes your structure, you will start functioning correctly. He said, we in yoga believe that structure follows function. If you start standing correctly, sitting correctly, twisting correctly, bending correctly, stretching correctly, uh, then your structure will adapt because the mind is not only in the brain. There is intelligence in every cell of your body uh, and every cell will adapt uh, to the correct way of functioning. You know, from this I learned, for example, that uh, at work, if we focus on technology structure, brand structure, cost structure, distribution structure, organization structure, we won't necessarily function right and make a great motorcycle. But instead, if we function right and try to make a great motorcycle, all these structures will fall into place. So I learned a lot of yoga uh, aphorisms, uh, as I did even from homeopathy and applied them to business. That is why I say to people, 
our motorcycles are as much a product uh, of a CFD and TPM as they are of yoga and homeopathy. Oh, that's, uh, I mean, you, you've learned a, lo a lot and you, you express it so well, Rajiv. And that is what is that, that, that is what makes it so wonderful uh, to hear. I mean, so much wisdom. Uh, Thank you. Prashant. By the way, you know that uh, ha the headstand that, uh, that we were playing visuals. I mean, actually, I was trying to see if there is some something behind him, and that seems complicated. As what you also said, I mean, it's, that is uh, no support. I mean, so, that's a perfect balance, right? Is that the is, is that one of the most difficult poses, Rajiv? Or uh, yes, that is at my, my place in uh, Goa. There is nothing behind me except a glass railing. <laughs> of I course, there is nothing. I was joking. <laughs> but, uh, but my father would say that uh, to kar liya, but he still cannot stand on his own feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, trust. Uh, yeah, fathers you know. have a way of keeping us uh, grounded, right? I mean, Absolutely. And and uh, Rajiv, I mean, uh, we we all remember, uh, uh, you know, the veteran, the patriarch of the Bajaj family. I, mean, I I lost my father a couple of years ago, so but, but the father's te teachings completely stay. That's all I'll say. I'll come to the business conversations in just a bit. But uh, Prashant, back to you. No, I was, I was uh, just, I mean, Rajiv, would you like to just, uh, you know, the, uh, the, you, you said your, the, your, the, you know, Guruji was telling you about cure, I mean, what cannot be cured and your, could you just repeat that for our viewers? I mean, that bit? Guruji's, yeah, Guruji said, and the choice of words, Prashant, is very beautiful. He said, yeah. yoga teaches us to cure what must not be endured and to endure what cannot be cured. So he's telling us that there's a lot that you can fix through yoga, primarily asanas and pranayamas by turning your mind inwards, hopefully aligning it towards a higher purpose in life to find what we are all looking for, which is nothing but the joy of peace. Uh, but at the end of the day, you must also accept that, you know, uh, acceptance is important part of it. There are some things that will never be cured. We are human after all. And yoga will give us the strength to cope with that. Okay, on that on that beautiful note, uh, Rajiv. Now let me try and steer the conversation towards uh, towards the business and towards what's really top of mind for you, sure. because there's so much ha happening, right? There's the triumph launch that everyone's talking about. Uh, there's this fantastic fight in the 125 cc segment that Bajaj has been putting up, gaining market share. It's been a very interesting last couple of months. And then there there's the export issue with with Nigeria, which has been struggling for a while. Last time we were speaking with uh, Rakesh, he was telling us, expect a pickup in July. So you know, these are three different sort of balls I, I suppose you're juggling at the same time. So tell us, uh, what is top of mind and uh, what's the immediate focus for you when you look at the business? I can elaborate on each of these. Uh, Triumph, I'm uh, headed off soon for the launch in London, as I had uh, said to all of you uh, a few weeks back. Uh, the first two motorcycles of the many that we are developing together. Uh, production will uh, uh, begin in early July. Deliveries will begin in July. Obviously, more details of the product, the prices, uh, uh, stuff like that uh, will be closer to that time. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, in the interest of Nigel, I can say this, that uh, we are trying our very best to hold the price closer to 2.5 lakhs than to 3 lakhs. Uh, uh, so hopefully uh, Nigel is uh, happy with that. Um, so, so that's about Triumph that will roll out of our new plant at Chakan, which has already been commissioned. Uh, we call it Chakan 2. Uh, KTM production is shifted there and uh, we have capacity in place, I think, for about uh, six or 8,000 Triumphs every month over there. Um, <laughs> On the uh, 125cc segment, yes, uh, we have consciously chosen to focus on the 125cc plus segment, so uh, 125cc and above. Um, I am motivated uh, uh, in no small measure by the great success of my younger brother, Siddharth. Uh, and if he can do so much uh, just participating in the 350cc segment, uh, surely we can do a lot more with 125cc+. plus. Uh, we've gained a lot of share. Uh, you're quite right. Uh, I think our share in the 125 is uh, uh, just under 30% and in the 150cc plus sports segment, as we call it, is just above 40%. Some of that is uh, due to the absence of HMSI in the market, though at a Vahan level, uh, you know, uh, HMSI has been present. Uh, so we are quite confident of, uh, of maintaining these gains as we go forward. The 100cc itself, we are less focused on for obvious reasons. And I think... 
these factors influence that and continue to influence that one that's the customer whose sentiment was most impacted by the lockdown that continues to be an issue uh, two uh, that's where petrol prices hurt the most and i think uh, people are uh, uh, you know being weaned by evs uh, uh, from there more than anywhere else and uh, finally yes uh, the premiumization to 125 cc so all in all i would say while hero with 80% share over there would like to expand their core as they call it we are going to do everything to shrink that core um, okay. as far as exports is concerned uh, i will give you some specific news uh, from an average of 200,000 a month uh, a few months ago, you know, we uh, had come down to uh, about almost half uh, at 100, 110,000 a month. Last month, we were at about 120, 125. This month looks more like 140,000. Hopefully, next quarter is more like 150,000. So, as Rakesh has been saying, uncertainty is a big factor. I may change my view in two weeks' time. But right now, it looks as if it's bottomed out, it's turning upwards, including in Nigeria, where there is devaluation because we expect the dollar to become available more freely. So all in all, it's looking better. Better. So when you said, I mean, I want to talk a little more about exports, but before that, when you said it, this will make Nigel happy, I thought you are going to gift him a new Triumph <laughs> bike or something. I mean, all you're doing is just reducing the price a little bit, right? Nigel, uh, l let him talk to me. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all looking forward to that launch, actually. It's going to be a big one for Bajaj Auto and for all the enthusiasts, right? The bike enthusiasts. But just one more word on exports. Uh, this uh, this devaluation that has happened of the Naira, I mean, it's another 30% depreciation that we've seen. Uh, will it, uh, I understand that, you know, it may sort of defer your timelines a bit. Earlier, you said by July, exports will improve. Now, maybe it may derail it further. But will it have a really big impact and, um, you know, what can we expect in terms of an annual run rate for exports now in FY24, both for the industry as well as for Bajaj Auto? You know, it's hard to say. As I said, uh, it's very uncertain. Uh, one day we hear of uh, three-wheelers being banned in Egypt. The next day it's motorcycles being banned in Iraq. The next day Argentina can deal only with RMB. The next day Nigeria devalues by 30%. I mean, who can predict uh, uh, anything? It would be very speculative. But I can definitely say this at this moment that I don't think what we said for July uh, needs to be deferred. As I explained, we are already coming back to about 140,000. Uh, hopefully, next quarter looks like 150,000 if there are no new nasty surprises. Uh, so, you know, we are coming back to about 75% uh, uh, of, the, of the normal. And, uh, you know, in the bigger picture, I mean, uh, price increases do get absorbed uh, and uh, consumers do adapt because at the end of the day, what we are selling them is not uh, luxury. We are selling them something they need, which is a basic necessity of life to go to school, to go to work, to go to shop, to socialize, so on and so forth, or even yeah. as a motorcycle taxi in, in, in Africa. So, and the OPEX is still very favorable, you know. So, mm. price increases mm. have happened before uh, for various reasons in various markets. Markets have come back. So, I'm not unduly concerned about that. We are focused okay. on our on our products, on our distribution, on, uh, you know, on our sales and service activation. So, we feel confident. Okay, just one quick uh, question before we let you go, because, you know, this is the hot topic at the moment, this uh, discontinuation of the uh, fame subsidies, right, from March of 2024. Right. I know your view on this, but do you think that the timing of the subsidy withdrawal may not be right? And in that context, it may end up derailing this whole, you know, EV tran transition that we are expecting? My own personal view, frankly, is that uh, the the correct time to do this uh, is earlier the better it uh, you, uh, you know my view uh, i have uh, i have said that uh, over 30 years so many innovations come came into the uh, uh, ice engine which was a simple two stroke air cooled engine meeting no emission norms to where we are today and i can list up a 30 uh, technological innovations that came in over 30 years uh, without any subsidy and uh, therefore i feel uh, you know i don't understand why governments all over the world think that uh, subsidies are going to drive uh, sales because in the end they are not sustainable. The money needs to go into that which can create the right environment for EVs. So be it charging infrastructure, be it special lanes, you know, uh, addressing battery disposal issues, etc. Uh, hopefully we are moving in, uh, in that direction.
So Rajiv, this is not altering your plans with respect to the Chetak, uh, you know, and the rest of the EV trajectory at all. Is the sense that I get? Oh, absolutely not. Because uh, you know, I was very fortunate to be part of Bajaj when we transitioned from scooters to motorcycles. For me, 30 years later, this is a sense of deja vu: motorcycles to EVs. As much as our goal 30 years ago was to be the world's most versatile and complete motorcycle maker, which I think we have achieved. We have become the world's most valuable motorcycle maker last year. I hope we can repeat the same thing uh, with EVs. I hope lightning strikes twice. And if I may lean on Elon Musk, we will do all we can humanly possible to make that happen. <laughs> well, uh, Very that's... timely leaning on Elon Musk. We just, saw, <laughs> we just saw that picture of Elon Musk as Prime Minister Modi, right? Doing the rounds on Twitter. But uh, Rajiv, always great speaking with you and happy yoga day once again to you. Thank you for uh, not to just uh, the yoga lessons, but life lessons as well. Thank you, everyone. Happy yoga day again. Right. Uh, well, uh, let's slip into a quick break on that note. Uh, we've gone on uh, for a goodish bit. When we come back from the break, we'll be in conversation with the management of BSC. The stock has been a big winner in the first quarter this year. S. Ramamurthy, who's the MD and CEO of BSC, will be with us to discuss their business momentum. We'll also be joined by Prem Kishan Gupta of Gateway District Parks to discuss their business outlook. Stay tuned. <laughs>